September 29th Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Jeremiah chapters 11 and 12 from the Old Testament The Lord said to Jeremiah, Hear the terms of the covenant I made with Israel and pass them on to the people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem. Tell them that the Lord, the God of Israel, says, Anyone who does not keep the terms of the covenant will be under a curse. Those are the terms that I charged your ancestors to keep when I brought them out of Egypt, that place which was like an iron smelting furnace. I said at that time, Obey me and carry out the terms of the agreement exactly as I commanded you. If you do, you will be my people and I will be your God. Then I will keep the promise I swore on oath to your ancestors to give them a land flowing with milk and honey. That is the very land that you still live in today. And I responded, Amen. Let it be so, Lord. The Lord said to me, Announce all the following words in the towns of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Listen to the terms of my covenant with you and carry them out. For I solemnly warned your ancestors to obey me. I warned them again and again ever since I delivered them out of Egypt until this very day. But they did not listen to me or pay any attention to me. Each one of them followed the stubborn inclinations of his own wicked heart. So I brought on them all the punishments threatened in the covenant because they did not carry out its terms as I commanded them to do. The Lord said to me, The people of Judah and the citizens of Jerusalem have plotted rebellion against me. They have gone back to the evil ways of their ancestors of old, who refused to obey what I told them. They too have paid allegiance to other gods and worshipped them. Both the nation of Israel and the nation of Judah have violated the covenant I made with their ancestors. So I, the Lord, say this, I will soon bring disaster on them which they will not be able to escape. When they cry out for me for help, I will not listen to them. Then those living in the towns of Judah and in Jerusalem will go and cry out for help to the gods to whom they have been sacrificing. However, those gods will by no means be able to save them when disaster strikes them. This is in spite of the fact that the people of Judah have as many gods as they have towns, and the citizens of Jerusalem have set up as many altars to sacrifice to that disgusting god, Baal, as they have streets in the city. So Jeremiah, do not pray for these people. Do not cry out to me or petition me on their behalf. Do not plead with me to save them, for I will not listen to them when they call out to me for help when disaster strikes them. The Lord says to the people of Judah, What right do you have to be in my temple, my beloved people? Many of you have done wicked things. Can your acts of treachery be so easily canceled by sacred offerings that you take joy in doing evil even while you make them? I, the Lord, once called you a thriving olive tree, one that produced beautiful fruit, but I will set you on fire, fire that will blaze with a mighty roar, then all your branches will be good for nothing. For though I, the Lord who rules over all, planted you in the land, I now decree that disaster will come on you, because the nations of Israel and Judah have done evil, and have made me angry by offering sacrifices to the god Baal. The Lord gave me knowledge that I might have understanding. Then he showed me what the people were doing. Before this, I had been like a docile lamb ready to be led to the slaughter. I did not know they were making plans to kill me. I did not know they were saying, let's destroy the tree along with its fruit. Let's remove Jeremiah from the world of the living so people will not even be reminded of him anymore. So I said to the Lord, O Lord, who rules over all, you are a just judge. You examine people's hearts and minds. I want to see you pay them back for what they have done, because I trust you to vindicate my cause. Then the Lord told me about some men from Anathoth who were threatening to kill me. They had threatened, Stop prophesying in the name of the Lord, or we will kill you. So the Lord, who rules over all, said, I will surely punish them. Their young men will be killed in battle. Their sons and daughters will die of starvation. 
Not one of them will survive. I will bring disaster on those men from Anathoth who threatened you. A day of reckoning is coming for them. Lord, you have always been fair whenever I have complained to you. However, I would like to speak with you about the disposition of justice. Why are wicked people successful? Why do all dishonest people have such easy lives? You plant them like trees and they put down their roots. They grow prosperous and are very fruitful. They always talk about you, but they really care nothing about you. But you, Lord, know all about me. You watch me and test my devotion to you. Drag these wicked men away like sheep to be slaughtered. Appoint a time when they will be killed. How long must the land be parched and the grass and every field be withered? How long must the animals and the birds die because of the wickedness of the people who live in this land? For these people boast, God will not see what happens to us. The Lord answered, If you have raced on foot against men and they have worn you out, how will you be able to compete with horses? And if you feel secure only in safe and open country, how will you manage in the thick undergrowth along the Jordan River? As a matter of fact, even your own brothers and the members of your own family have betrayed you too. Even they have plotted to do away with you. So do not trust them even when they say kind things to you. I will abandon my nation. I will forsake the people I call my own. I will turn my beloved people over to the power of their enemies. The people I call my own have turned on me like a lion in the forest. They have roared defiantly at me, so I will treat them as though I hate them. The people I call my own attack me like birds of prey or like hyenas, but other birds of prey are all around them. Let all the nations gather together like wild beasts. Let them come and destroy these people I call my own. Many foreign rulers will ruin the land where I planted my people. They will trample all over my chosen land. They will turn my beautiful land into desolate wasteland. They will lay it waste. It will lie parched and empty before me. The whole land will be laid waste, but no one living in it will pay any heed. A destructive army will come marching over the hilltops in the desert, for the Lord will use them as his destructive weapon against everyone from one end of the land to the other. No one will be safe. My people will sow wheat, but will harvest weeds. They will work until they are exhausted, but will get nothing from it. They will be disappointed in their harvest because the Lord will take them away in his fierce anger. I, the Lord, also have something to say concerning the wicked nations who surround my land and have attacked and plundered the land that I gave to my people as a permanent possession. I say, I will uproot the people of these nations from their lands and I will free the people of Judah who have been taken there. But after I have uprooted the people of those nations, I will relent and have pity on them. I will restore the people of each of those nations to their own lands and to their own country. But they must make sure you learn to follow the religious practices of my people. Once they taught my people to swear their oaths using the name of the god Baal. But then they must swear oaths using my name saying as surely as the Lord lives I swear. If they do these things then they will be included among the people I call my own. But I will completely uproot and destroy any of those nations that will not pay heed, says the Lord. God, I'm kind of laughing. Only a little bit, but I'm kind of laughing. It seems like all the conversations I've been having with you, especially the last couple weeks of my life, are almost word for word or tone for tone exactly what Jeremiah is saying to you right now. And... Of course, your timing's perfect that we're recording Jeremiah at the moment. It seems baffling, frustrating, irritating when I, I don't get my life right. I, I sin, I, I, but I try and do good. <laughs> I try and seek you. I try and be faithful to you. I try and be obedient to the things you ask. I get it wrong. 
not comparing myself to other humans, but I get it wrong. But you and I both know the persecution I've been under, especially lately, by non-Christians and, interestingly enough, by Christians as well. And it is so frustrating. And so I completely understand Jeremiah going, God, are you joking me? I'm trying here. And let, and yet these people persecute me. You don't even stop the persecution, but on top of it, it appears as though you're blessing them. Now, both Jeremiah and I know that that's not true, that that's just the illusion that we see. But both Jeremiah and I know that you're sovereign. We know at any given time you could stop the persecution. We both know that you could choose to not bless the evil people of this world. Jeremiah and I both know that at any given time you could choose to make our lives smoother. <laughs> and not so filled with road bumps and brick walls and abusive people who seem to get everything in this world. I know that sounds incredibly selfish, but sometimes that persecution just wears you out. And when you're missing sleep and you're missing focus, sometimes those are the most honest words I can use. I'm frustrated. I'm frustrated that I keep trying God and there doesn't seem to be even a break in the action to let me catch my breath before we're on to the next persecution and the next persecution. I totally know that you're teaching me stuff. Just like you tell Jeremiah, look, if you can't handle this, you're not going to handle the bigger things I have for you. And I get that, God. And in my clear moments, I truly get that. When I've had enough sleep and the, the jackals haven't been attacking me all day long. But sometimes, God, it would help if just sometimes that comfort would come in, in a format that at least lasted enough to, to allow me to catch my breath. And I know right now, even if the, as the words tumble out of my mouth and I'm asking for too much, Jeremiah knew it too. We know that if we rely on you, we will be fine. We know that you'll never give us more than we can handle because we have your strength. We know that you have offered to take our yoke and replace it with your lighter one. We know all these things and they sound really good on paper. And we know in our hearts that they're the truth. But sometimes when your life is, is lived out, where everybody around you who's persecuting you seems to get all the desires of their heart, and you seem to get persecution after persecution after persecution, gosh, those words on the paper seem really hard and very far, far away to make it to my heart. God, I just ask you today to help change my heart I know that what the Bible says and I know it's the truth and I know since my version differs from what the Bible says then my version's not accurate and so the only thing I have left to beg of you is to change my heart to allow those words from the Bible, those comfort words, those strengthening words, those encouraging words, to make it from the Bible into my heart, to make it from the Bible into my head, to make it from the Bible into my actions every day, so that I'm not exhausted from dealing with all these people and situations, so I still have fight and strength and the will to continue and to do what you want me to do in this, in this world. God, you and I both know that I don't live in this world very well. And honestly, it's not just because I wasn't made for this world. That's a big part of it. But I'm odd. Um, I'm okay with being odd. Most of the rest of the world is not okay with me being odd. Um, 
And so that's part of it too, is I am definitely not a person who was made for this world. And so you know that that's a struggle as well. God, I just thank you in advance for working on my heart. I know as my heart accepts your word and your truth more and more and begins to realize that your love and your comfort and your grace and your mercy are actually all around me all the time. God, allow those filters of only seeing the persecution fall away from my eyes so that I can see your love for me, your excitement for what I'm doing in your name. And I can also see your discipline as a form of that love as well. God, I just thank you for honestly making my path hard. I have learned a lot about you. I've learned a lot about our relationship. I've learned a lot about people. But right now, I need your strength. Right now, I need a little bit lighter load um, just so that I can breathe a little bit, God. And then I promise I'll be back full strength for you, worshiping you, glorifying you, loving you. Um, I just, I just miss some of our time. I miss just resting in you and allowing your words to wash over me. I miss my time with you. And how ironic it is that I spend so much time in your word and so much time recording your word and so much time talking to other people about you. But it's amazing how important that is and how valuable it's become to me. That I just really truly want to take time and have it just be about you and I. And allow my heart to breathe. And allow those words to sink in. And allow my mind to hear what you need me to, to know and to learn. God, thank you for taking such good care of me. And I thank you in advance, again, for the change in my heart. Now and in the future, I thank you. In your son's name I pray. Amen.